Okay. All right. Welcome. Welcome. Now I've got all my bells and whistles working. Okay. All right, Miss Sung. Let's uh, let's start with some casual conversation before we get into the work. I'll ask you some questions about your day. These are pretty easy questions to answer, though. I ask these of my really young students to yeah, yeah. I think you can. I think you can. They're simple. They're simple, but and you can always make use of them, be, these kinds of questions, if there's any problems with sentence structure and things like that. So, um, all right. So, what time did you wake up this morning? Okay, and what time did you leave your house for work? Uh -huh. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, and how long does it take you to get to work? Do you drive to work? How do you go to work? Mm -hmm. Ah, I see. Okay, so, yeah, so. The only correction there that I would make is when you spoke about the going to the market. Uh, you can say drop or or stop also works, uh, but do we just say drop by? Drop by the market. Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, yes. Drop by the market. You need you need to. Um, have a preposition there, so by or at or like something something like that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Or a, or or a transitional verb like you know I was, I went to the market. Prepositional phrase. Uh, sorry confused here on my terms um, anyway so uh, yeah that's it you drop by the market. okay so we're gonna circle back around Wow so it took you it takes you 30 minutes to go to work it take it takes you uh, one hour to be ready to sh to shower and get dressed and eat and eat breakfast, so that is pretty quick. I guess maybe everybody it only takes that long for for getting ready for work. But uh, anyway, so what what did you have for breakfast today? So you had an omelet, omelet mole. You, oh, that you. Kai, kai jiao. Oh, okay. I thought you said omelet for some reason. Okay. Yes, but I. I know blood in many s different Thai dishes. There's the, there is the soup that they they mix blood in it. There. Mm hmm. 
there is also the congealed blood that they make it thick and then they cut it into cubes and ser serve it in soups and curries. So did you have the blood soup or did you have the uh, congealed blood? No, what? I know pig. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I like the pig blood soup. It's it's, it's good. It's very tasty actually. Very good. Okay, so you had breakfast, and then you stopped by the market and gave food to the monks, and then, and then you're at. It took it takes you thirty minutes to go to work. I see. So you are usually into work. I assume you must, you're on your schedule. You must be at work at, yes, 8 o'clock. I was going to say 9 for some reason. My brain is not calcu calculating very well right now. Um, okay, 8 o'clock. Well, that is, uh, that is a good time. And you finish work at 5 p.m.? Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Cool. So is that your normal morning routine? Tip Or your typical? Yeah. See. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how often do you make merit by giving monks food? Do you do that every day or twice a week or how often? Okay. Yes. We don't do that in my house so often. <laughs> but I mm -hmm. Yes. Well, that's good. That's nice and healthy for your mind and spirit. So. All right, and then, so yesterday we talked about your work. We talked about the complaint and the claim. We, resol we resolved the English lesson with that. Uh, we talked about making resolutions and lots of different vocabulary. So we can review that in a, in a moment if you like, but let's talk some more about your day at work then since you're... You passed your you passed your morning routine questions with flying colors. You, you spoke very well. Great grammar. Great structure. Okay. So what? How was work today? Tell me all about it. Routine or, or was it routine or very busy? I, my, it was that initial service offering. I don't know. I can find that. Uh, come back. No, no, no. It's giving me chemistry. I've seen the term around. I know what IPO is, but ISO meaning yes. Ah, international standard for international organization for standardization. Oh. Mm hmm.
I see. So, yes, that is kind of like a Better Business Bureau. I, I'm not exactly a Better Business Bureau. That, that's got a, sometimes a negative connotation around it. But it's a, if you are uh, ISO 9001 certified, that's a very good uh, certification to have for your company and your people because it, it, it creates a standard. It's almost like a marketing tool. Even though they do they do, do training and teach you what, what standards need to be met. So oh very good. Are you excited by that or how how does that how what's your feeling on I thought so. Have you done this training before? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Audition. Auditing, yes. That's slightly different. When you say audition, I think of like auditioning for a movie role or something like that. But to audit something is a, is a different meaning. Yeah, nobody likes being audited. Right? It, it in the USA anyway. It's got a very negative sort of meaning to it because if you're being audited, it means the government is looking at your money. They want to see if you've been. Uh, but companies audit themselves all the time to see if where they are losing money and how to save money. So it's not so negative in that term. But anyway. Okay, so well, do you do in-house auditing at your company? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So is that standard in in the in this kind of business industry for the different departments to audit one another? Okay, I see. And so that, uh, so that third-party auditing system, do they do they verify the results of all of the internal audits? Okay, so the internal auditing is for me for the for the ISO nine thousand uh, cert certifi nine thousand one certification. Okay, so it's not like okay, I I, I get it. So because there's that is a one one um, way, and I don't know much. I've seen this around. I can't believe I'm just looking at it for the first time. Uh, the International Organization for Standardization is a worldwide federation of national standards body, non-governmental organization that can blah, 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 blah. Uh, it says a lot of stuff. It doesn't say exactly what it does in the, in the uh, pretext here. So um, anyway, well, we can, we, can, we can make that a topic of study. So but so that's uh, that's for the purposes of ISO 
9001 to practice, but is there any other internal auditing that you guys do? Like I, I would I would imagine that with a company doing your kind of business uh, that you would want to keep track of, uh, do audits with uh, purchasing and, and, and sales sales and kind of look at both data sets to, um, to, and of the different departments to see if to see if any red flags are being raised. Do you understand what I mean by red flag? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, that's a good term for us to explore because you will hear that is often you that is used in contemporary society as well as business. So we call it a red flag. And I don't know exactly where this term originated from. Um, there used to be a game, a Minesweeper, where you would put red flags on where you thought there might be a mine, and uh, that was in the window. That was in Windows. You could probably play it on your computer right now, as a matter of fact. Um, I don't think that's where the origin of it came from, but anyway, a red flag is what we use. That we use that expression to say there's something not right. It's like a warning sign, right? Like a stoplight is a warning. It says stop, there might be traffic, okay? So, uh, yes, like a, like a red light, but we say red flag, right? Cause, so a red flag is like the flag goes up. It's like a warning sign, okay? I'll tell you, for example, you know, um, I'm sorry, I never asked, are, are you married? Okay, and, okay, so, before you were married, you probably dated a few men, had a couple of different boyfriends, everything natural like that, right? Okay, but not all of them were necessarily men you wanted to marry. Maybe they were, I don't know. But just for a, just for argument's sake, right? Likewise, for, for men, it's the same. Sometimes we see a girl uh, or a woman, and we think, wow, she's lovely, she's cute, she's beautiful. Uh, but then, doesn't matter how beautiful she is, sometimes we will see a red flag, a red flag gets raised. Bing, 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 and our warning. Same for women. They see something in a man they don't like, they go, Ooh, you know, he's handsome and he says everything the right way, but that one thing, it just sets you off. It said, yeah, this is not a person I want to be with. Okay. Now, because that's an investment in your personal life, of course, that's the one context that we can use it in, right? Um, now, as far as business is concerned, though, now if you do an internal audit, uh, that is not related to ESO 9001, these internal audits can, if you compare the data, they can raise red flags if there are discrepancies. So say, for example, uh, the sales department is reporting, uh, is, 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 is reporting, uh, 800 units of of a product being sold for that month okay uh, and then you can look in your shipping depart your shipping and receiving department right um, and they've they've reported uh, only 700 units have been shipped okay and then you go, you know, and then you go to the warehouse clerk and then, and then they say, oh, uh, we don't have any of that product in our inventory right now. We've, we, 
then we shipped it all out. So there's there's a discrepancy in there between the sales department saying we sold 800 of them, uh, then your shipping and receiving says there's 700 and only we had 700 and all of those are gone now and we never had 800. So you know there's the 100 unit discrepancy. It could be a mistake, but it's a red flag. You have to go investigate what happened to that 100 other units. Um, did the sales clerk, did somebody in shipping and receiving uh, steal them? Or did the sales clerk monkey around with the numbers? Uh, so in sales, it looked like he got up. Maybe he's trying just to get a bigger commission. and. So, so there could be, or maybe it was just a mistake. You know, it could have been anything. But those are red flags that you know, doing that kind of auditing will will give you an, a reason to investigate and say what happened here. Because so, that's your that's your money, that's your company's money. You got to take care of it. That's why we do audits. Even for me, as as a when I worked before in the United States, I worked as a chef. And we would have to, we would have to do, uh, depending on where I was working, sometimes we would do weekly audits of our, just to track, in, the, in two different departments in the in the in the kitchen where the food is made, and then the the uh, the bar where the alcohol was served. Both of them would be audited on a weekly basis to make sure. We weren't wasting too much food, and for not nobody was stealing food, things like that. Yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. I love cooking very much, but I don't do so much of it anymore because um, my wife also likes to cook a lot. No, no, she's she's getting better at my kind of food, uh, for Western food, um, but she is much better than me with uh, with th with Thai food for sure. So, and she does not like foreign food that much. So, so it's just, and I can eat everything. So I. Uh, yeah, but so it's just easier if, if I let her cook, right? And then if I if I make something for you know because I'm homesick, I miss home, and I'll spend a long time preparing it, getting it right, and then she's she, she'll take the the chilies and the fish sauce, and turn up, ah, so it's, it's it, you know just let her get make her food, and she'll be happy. And she's happy with that. But I get bored of Thai food too, just like anything else. So, mm -hmm. yes, I mean it's delicious, but it's just a different. It's a different taste profile. So, mm hmm, mm hmm. Right, like, um, you know. We're getting a little off topic here, but we can talk about that because you you can kind of transition and apply that to to business, and we'll try we'll try to segue back into it. But uh, just for example, Thai food uh, it's got a taste profile where the dishes and the curries they have spicy, sweet, salty. Um, you know, and and sour all together in one dish, and it's nice. It's nice to have it like that. And then there's some that are just spicy and salty, and then, and there's others that are just a little more sweet, and that's all fine and delicious. But for me, I enjoy that taste profile. And uh, then other times I like the uh, more Italian uh, taste taste profile, um, uh, which is you know, 
<laughs> so salty, sometimes a little bit spicy, uh, not too much sour, um, and then and then not not too much cheese, but there is cheese in there, so we've got some creaminess there. And so yeah, there's that. Or then sometimes sometimes I feel more like uh, the American South taste profile. That's what I want, which will which will be high fat. <laughs> yeah, I have, I'm an Italian American, so my great grandfather emigrated from from Sicily uh, to to America and then moved to California. So. Well, I also like French food. I like, uh, the thing is, I grew up in California. And in California, there's a lot of, there's pretty much, you could really say there's two main uh, tastes in California. Um, Mexican cuisine, which is very, I, yeah, that's another flavor profile I really like to, to have. Uh, um and I would say, yeah, Italian food, too, because there are a lot of Italians that moved to California, and it became very popular. And if you look at the food history, American food was, like, just people, a lot of it was coming from England or, you know, Ireland, and that food is not very good, not very delicious. And so Americans sort of went for French, Italian, and then Asian foods and Mexican foods, but especially in California. So, and being from California, my my taste buds are spoiled. Like, I would never be satisfied with just Italian food or just Thai food. Or you know, I have to. I have. We can eat. We can eat any anything. And it's not, look, I mean, it's not going to be exactly Thai or Vietnamese or Italian like you would get there. But they do the best they can, and you get to have some of the taste. But it's all California at the end of the day. So, But it's nice. It's nice. You can have so many different kinds of food and really get spoiled. So it's not anything against, I don't have anything against Thai food. This It's just, I've had too many different kinds of food to have a fate. Yeah. It took a while to get used to it. It's a very it's a very strong strong uh, taste and I still don't like, you know, I see when they, they make some of the sellers they make the sum tum and they they just go go for it. They just keep putting it. In. And that's the thing. Like I like those flavors like uh but for my style of food whether if I'm making it, even if it's a Thai food that I'm trying to make, I always try to get like a really close balance. So if it's supposed to be sour and sp spicy, and I like a little, I, I don't want to have it be sour and then this much more spicy. I don't, like right about if we're gonna have a little bit off balance, just this much, just so you can really taste, you know, the food. When I don't like. I don't like the flavor a flavor profile where there is so much uh, power uh, and where it's overpowering because right? you can't for me I cannot taste the other things um, you can taste them but you can't enjoy them as much when you have too much chili pepper you know boxing with <laughs> you. Yeah, but I only eat it about twice a year. Um, I've been, I've been the first time. It was very difficult for me to eat. The second time, still very difficult. But then slowly but surely, just the smell and being around it, and then I, I, I do enjoy it when I do eat it. But now, and even now, I'm very picky about it. Like it, like if it's if it's not soft enough. The durian that's not soft enough, like, ugh, I don't like it. Um, yeah, uh, and then not all durian is is uh, delicious. Like some of it is very, yeah.
too ripe, too ripe. Yes, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I just say I've been in Thailand for 10 years. But, yeah, but I left, I left one time. I went back home, and I stayed home in the U.S. for six months. And then another time I left, and I stayed in the U.S. for 18 months. And then I came back again. So, but that, I started coming to Thailand in 2010, right about this time, actually. Do you remember what happened in 2010 in April? You don't, you don't remember April 2010? Maybe. In the year 2010, in Bangkok, there were many protests in, a yeah, in April. So, the red shirts, yeah, yeah. So, um, <laughs> that was a kind of a strange, strange choice to come during that time. And it wasn't, but that's when I came, so. Anyway, but, uh... So, I said we could segue back into profiles with business. So, you can create profiles. We were talking quite a while about uh, flavor profiles. Um, and in the same way, you could, like, you know, you could have your favorites. You could rank them. Like me, if I were to rank it, I would say I like, I like uh, salty, uh, salty and a little bit spicy. Is probably my number one number one uh, favorite taste profile, and rank them down um, from there. All right, but anyway, now as that applies to business, now you could chain, you could switch out salty and spicy, as you know, for example, uh, some sort of element or attribute of the company, like. Um, you know, they've got, you know, this company, you know, it ranks number one for its distribution capacity. All right. All right. Uh, you have a question. You look like you have a question. So anyway, you can just create profiles of the businesses that you do with your, uh, that you deal with within your, um, within your, your company so you can decide and you can, you can look at those profiles and decide what the best uh, which which are the best businesses for you, for you to choose from for whichever particular assignment you're working on um, and then hmm, I was thinking about you earlier today because I had a class not a class I had an idea about something we were talking about, I'm trying to remember what it was. Um, had something to do with amortization again. <laughs> so, uh, anyways, uh, if I, I'll, I'll try to remember it again later. So, okay. Um, <clears throat> all right. So, what are the perks that you get working for your company? Perks. Perks. P E R K S. Perks. So, yeah. So, for me, the perks doing this job here are all provided by myself because I'm self employed. Okay. Uh, perks, though are something that if you're working for a company, it's like a benefit. Yeah. So, for example, one of the perks for uh, an employee of Google or Facebook is on at the company facilities, they have a gym. 
they have a restaurant with chefs and food from all over the world. So, yes. And they don't charge, like, those are, the, the, they don't charge the employees for food. They want the employees to really enjoy and be happy at, at their work. And so they give them all of these perks plus a high salary. Like they, they don't charge them for the food that they eat. If they want to go take an hour or two hours or three hours at the gym to every day to exercise, they kind of give them that freedom to do that as long as they get all their work done and they log in the hours that they're working then they can stay at work indefinitely so those are some perks uh, and some other perks might be Google and these are the true story uh, I have a Google or Facebook they may pay a famous uh, rock band or, or singer to come to play a private show like the really really famous people so those are that's pretty extreme for a company but that's what a company like Google or Facebook can do but most companies of you know medium size even small or medium enterprises will try to give their employees some kind of perks what does your company provide you with any any bonuses outside of salary and insurance Okay, so not not many perks for, but that's yeah, but that's pretty good though I think for the uh, the uh, low wage workers is to give them a perk is they're not they're not highly skilled but and they don't get a lot of money, but giving them a little bit of something to help them out to keep them happy is good because it's like when I worked in the kitchens and as a chef we always would say yeah I cook the food and the waiters t take the orders and bring the food sure but but the heart of the kitchen and the heart of the restaurant is the dishwasher <laughs> so, the dishwasher mm -hmm. everybody if the di the dishwasher was well, there's only one, depends on the size of the restaurant, but there can only be one of them in smaller restaurants sometimes. And if they don't show up, everybody has to worry, right? And same for your company. If all the Myanmar employees suddenly didn't show up one day, how are the orders going to get filled? Right? So, so you have to be respectful. You have to be nice and give a little back. So, and that's what we would do for our dishwashers. We would say hello. How are you? Give. Yeah, we would get the cooks would give them food, the waiters would give them money, help out because they also were the lowest paid. So, okay, interesting. So not many perks. Uh, what about vacation time? Do you earn paid time off? every year mm -hmm. and is that paid time off or or not so we call it certain companies it's not a perk so much as it is a benefit right um, if I worked at a, so for example, I worked at a hotel and 
we earned, we, we just call it PTO for short. And PTO is paid time off. Paid time off. Mm -hmm. So you earn your normal wage, but for something like for every every 40 hours worked, you earn uh, you earn some huh? No, not overtime. That's different. So paid time off is like vacation time almost, right? You can use it to go on vacation. You can use it any time uh, you want a day off or two days off even. But you don't lose money, right? It that so, but it accrues, right? You, so I, at my company, I could earn up to 20 days of PTO, all right? But I didn't get it. It wasn't automatic, right? So for example, I would, for every 40 hours that I worked, I would earn maybe uh, 15 minutes of paid time off. And so then after like two years, you'll collect, yeah, so that's, that's how that works. how long you've worked and how many hours you've worked because if I'm if I'm working lots of overtime for the company I still earn that PTO and so, so um, and it's a, it's a nice little benefit to have in case you do want to go on a two-week vacation somewhere or, or if your kid gets sick and you need to stay at home with them you can just call in and say hey I need to go take some PTO because my, my kid is sick and then you don't lose money for taking care of your child. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So we got so you do you earn PTO at your at your work? Savage. Savage. Oh, I said that is savage. I don't, that's the negative, like, how do we say, a savage is like, uh, pardon me? No, no, no. If I say, yeah, yeah, I'd say for five years to only get ten days, is is not enough <laughs> it is a small bit I mean it's better than nothing but you know that's sort of like yeah I, I should not comment I don't really know all the details of how your compensated so um, yeah if, if you, at, at five years you get ten days a year okay that's that's not too bad it's not too bad we in America hmm well typically uh, our cutoff is at 14 days right so we get 14 days of PTO um, or 20 days in my case um, but and then it, but it doesn't, um, but because we, Americans don't take vacations very often. And it's not like Thailand where there's lots of holidays. So when we go on, when we finally do go on a vacation, you better believe we're going to go for 14 days and you won't hear, hear you won't hear from us. Cause that's, if you've ever met, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, there are a lot of holidays in Thailand too, so yeah, in America there's not quite so many holidays. 
and the holiday the holidays in Thailand are uh, many times but they're also on a really good schedule right there might be a holiday on Friday and then another one on Monday and that's like four days you can just relax and, and have fun so right in America in America you might have you might have Halloween on a, a ho Halloween's a holiday it's not a national holiday but you might have Halloween on a on, on a Monday <laughs> and the kid yeah nobody likes to, nobody wants to have a Halloween party on a Monday because ad adults like Halloween also so um, anyway, so, okay, well, let's see, let's see what we got here. Let's take a quick look. Uh, they saved the website for us. Uh, real quick warning, though, I'm going to switch to the standard classroom, and you might have to refresh your page, but just give it some time to load your camera. If, if there's, you're on a computer, though, so it works pretty quick. Let's see. There we go. No problem. Okay, so all right, we went over this uh, t -t 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 as soon as possible. Uh, the American Society for Testing Materials, an organization that develops and publishes standard specifications on various products. That's interesting. The American Society for Testing and Materials. Does Thailand have an equivalent organization? So I'm, I'm looking at this one. Does Thailand have an equivalent organization? Equivalent means the same. Yeah, or equal to. Right? Yeah. So it's kind of like So this the specifications on various products. So that is how something must it's kind of like the so with ISO 9000 that's kind of like an uh, for your or your organization structure and management right but this is this is about actual production of items right the specifications for maybe uh, for example uh, maybe maybe O top right maybe there's something maybe they're similar they have standards and specifications what criteria a producer needs to meet to qualify to be an O top product right all right, so um, so so OTOP might might be its own organization, but this is probably something a little more designed for international trade. Um, not just selling but making right yeah yeah but I was asking if there is an organization like this in Thailand that Mm-hmm. You're a man. Uh, I'm not sure if they're operate operating in Thailand. Uh, ASTM standards. Let's just do a quick. 
quick search here. Uh, well, how about that? ASTM and US EPA tests construction at SGS Thailand. Okay, so yeah, they they are operating here in Thailand and to some degree. Uh, that's interesting. Okay, well look at that. We're gonna save this. This is a lot. This might be something worth looking at later. I'll show you. I'll show you a quick quick look at this. So, yeah, it's definitely standards and specif specifications, um, but in the production of goods. So if they, yeah, it's, I was wondering, my question though was, was it, uh, is there a Thai body or a Thai based organization? That would be, uh oh. I did not want this here. That is not what I wanted to do. Anyway, uh, let's try it again. Oh, I know what it's doing. I might have to screen share with that one because it's asking for cookies. And this is just a. Let's see if this. Let's see if this one works. Oh, it's not gonna do it. It's gonna be all funky. Okay. Well, never mind that. We'll do it a different way, but that is interesting to say. I think so. So ASTM, uh, A S R. Just kidding. Uh, okay. Do you run across this a lot in your in your work? The ASTM standards. Your customers are asking for that. The ASTM certif certification or uh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay, all right. So who is the customer for the, for a product that is ASTM certified? Is it a Thai company or another foreign company? Okay. So are these products typically uh, a high quality, medium quality, or okay? Mm -hmm. And have you ever? Does, so your your company is sending you to training for ESO nine thousand one. Have they ever sent you to training for for uh, ASTM standards? No, no. Okay. I don't even know if they do that. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
interesting. All right, let's see. What do you know? Let's look at this next one here. What do you know about bartering? Well, it says it right here. If you've never, have you ever heard this term before? Bartering is what bartering is one of the oldest forms of trade. Uh, it's got its positives and its negatives. Its negatives being it's got a very low, very poor. It's a very poor medium of exchange, right? So, for example, let's say the, the, they always use this in the in the economics class. For uh, they'll say, "I've got, I've got a chicken," uh, and but what I need, I don't. What I need is wood. Okay, so and then. You've got wood, but you don't need my chicken eggs, right? So, pardon me? Yeah, well, it's like, yeah. So, for example, instead of using cash, I need wood to build a fence. So, or I need, to, I need wood to build a, a chicken house, okay? I've got chickens and eggs. You've got wood. So I can give you, I can barter with you and say, listen, uh, Miss Sung, I will give you 100 eggs for uh, you know, 100 kilograms of wood, for example, right? If that's a good deal, if, it's, if you're happy and I'm happy, we trade, everything goes well. That's bartering. There's no cash exchange, only goods. Or you can also use labor as a good as well but now as far now but as far as a medium for exchange a medium is like a method uh, a method of exchange or medium right we could an artist works in different mediums artists work with paint or sculpture or film, and photography, those are different mediums, different methods of production. So, uh, bartering is not a good medium of exchange uh, because it depends on the needs of who you are bartering with. If you, if I don't have, if you have something I want, but I don't have anything you want, I'm out of luck. So we invented money, and so that's why we use money today. But people still do bartering. I think it was in 2001, a long time ago, China uh, traded, traded with Africa. It's exact. It's a form of trade. It's a medium of trade, right? Because I can trade with money just as easily as I can trade with cows. Well, I can trade with money easier than I can trade with cows or beans or safety gloves or masks, right? Right now, it's probably very easy to trade with with masks, <laughs> but. but Okay, so, but yeah, bartering, all right, and the, the, the clinical definition we've got here, the academic definition they've got here is a type of transaction involving no money or cash where one party provides one type of goods in exchange for another type of goods. Bartering can be carried out domestically or globally. Yes. And it does. There was a time, I think it was 20 years ago now, where China, they traded goods. I think they, I don't know what it was, they traded with Africa. But they got 
200,000 cows from somewhere in Africa in exchange for something else, some other goods that the Africans needed. Okay. All right. Um, bill of lading, a written receipt given by a carrier for goods accepted for transportation. Okay. You're familiar with that one, I'm sure. Okay. okay. Bill of material, a list of items used in the manufacture of a product. The list may show which items are required to make sub-assemblies and which sub-assemblies are required for the complete product being produced. The list may also indicate which components are manufactured and which are purchased from outside sources of supply. That's a lot. Do you do you have do you run across a bill bills of material when you in your work? That's that's right. So um, that's ex that's ex that's ex and sub assemblies. Mm -hmm. So let's say, for example, I want to build a car, right? All right. So let's take one component of a car. All right. And I need the list. We'll start with the engine. The engine's the engine's a good part. Okay. So um, I would need a list to show which. To, to, to make one car, right? And then the engine is a sub-assembly, right? And even inside the engine, there's more sub-assemblies, right? There's the camshaft, the pistons, and there's different different things inside, moving parts. All right, so, and then, so it will list all of the materials I need to make a car and make the, make what, what I need, what is being used to make the engine, what is being used to make, make the seats, what is, all right? And then, pardon me, yeah, it, depending on what it is, it could be a very, very big list, right? And depending on how much it includes, because it also says it includes sub-assemblies that are purchased somewhere else, right? So it could be quite big. Uh, you probably don't have to deal with that too much, because safety equipment is pretty straightforward, I think. All right, this might be a good term here, blanket order. An agreement. To, go ahead. Blanket order. An agreement to purchase or per or a purchase order for a given quantity of specific goods over a period of time, often one year. Okay, that's interesting, because that might be something, and I don't know, but it might be something used in conjunction with amortization. Uh, but anyway, let's focus on blanket order. Um, is this is this a tool you have to that you're able to use?
I think I. I think you're on the right track, and again, this is your industry, so you'll probably know it better than I do. Um, for me, what I what I see there, it's an agreement to purchase, and and the wording is is very important here, an agreement to purchase, or a purchase order, for a given quantity, of specific goods over a period of time, often one year. So that's like saying, to me anyway, that's that's an order that says, okay, listen, I've got a good relationship with you and your company. Uh, give me a good deal. Uh, you know, I might, if I'm, if I'm a seller, I might order I might do a blanket order with you if I, if I've got uh, a high, highly consumable um, product, right? Like bottled water, for example. Everybody drinks bottled water these days. So I say, okay, I promise to buy uh, one million bottles of water from you over one year, right? Now. But I don't know how fast I'm going to be selling these bottles of water, right? But I just promise, okay, yeah, we've got a good relationship. So, you know, maybe I'll pay you. And then maybe the purchase order is I just purchase as I need it. And then the last month is pay or quit, right? Which, in other words, means I finish, you know, it doesn't matter. I've got to get the. I've got to buy whatever's left. So if I if you ha, if I buy a million bottles of water from you, and then at the end of one year, that you have uh, nine hundred and ninety nine uh, thousand bottles of water, I have to pay for them all at the, at the end, or whatever is negotiated, you know, between between the two company the two parties. So, but I think I think you you've done that. Do you, so. I would think I would think perhaps you receive blanket orders from your customers. Okay. Can you tell me about? You don't have to tell me the specifics, the names and places, or things like that. But can you tell me a, about a time you received a blank a blanket order? I see. I see what you're saying. Go ahead, I'm trying. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, that sounds pretty similar. Uh, they may be exact that. The only thing here, the only difference here in this definition, they say it's often for one year. But there's no reason why you couldn't just say, okay, six months or three months or something, something along that way. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. So they're just. They are just grooming the battlefield or preparing for for when they're ready to order. Okay. Uh, 
Alright. Okay, here we go. So Alright. Well it is now ten sixteen. I think our time is up now. and uh, I will make sure double time that I have sent you the link properly so we can start on time next time. Uh, but thank you again. And if, if you have any questions, you can you can send them to me by email. Uh, if you have any suggestions, any things, any problems, please tell me about them. I will do if there. I will. Do, all right. I want to keep you happy. I want to keep you happy and learning. Okay. So let me know. All right. Okay, Miss Sung, I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye-bye. Thank you.